Diesel. It's time to get up, man. It's time to get up, man. Your old man nap is over. Diesel? I don't think he's getting up. He's learned to ignore you. We yeah. all learn eventually. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm at home uh, for the morning today. Well, in the evening, I've got to head out towards work uh, really soon. I'm just waiting for a video to upload and some laundry to get done. Uh, we've had problems with our roof leaking lately again. I think I showed you that at the end of yesterday's video. So I've been up on the roof today already, shoveling off all the extra snow that has fallen in the past couple of days since the last time I was up there and I was able to break off a lot of the ice that was dammed up on that side of the house over our bedroom so I don't think it's going to leak in our bedroom anymore but uh yeah see that there that came through there and onto our mattress it's ice damming so I was able to get all the ice off there was probably about that much ice stuck on there but I, I let the sun beat down on it for a little bit while I was up there and then I could break it off or sort of just kick it off with my foot. So that was lucky, but there's still quite a bit of ice over this area here on the roof, right where this veranda out here, I guess that's what you call it, right where this roof meets the house roof. There's a little valley there. A lot of ice sitting up there yet, but it's melting off quickly. Uh, we'll go over and Watch go down. We don't have eaves trough, so it just rolls off the roof wherever it wants to. It was pouring off before. Yeah, it still is. But uh, you can see it there. Coming off pretty quickly. So I'm thinking within a day or two or a couple of days of some nice warm sunshine like this, all the ice should be off and that'll be that. We're planning on getting this roof redone with metal later this summer. During the summer, it's not going to leak at all. It's just the ice that comes through. So as long as we get the roof redone before next winter, we'll be good to go. So we have a, several months to save up yet. Britt was going to come on the truck with me today to BC. We're all excited about it. But since we had major leaking uh, yesterday, there was two buckets in the kitchen, completely filled and overflowed just within like 10 hours. Three. Three hours? Oh, three buckets. Three buckets. Gallon pails. So that's why I was up on the roof today, so it's not leaking in here anymore. But damage has already been done. At least we got no more water coming in, and she's going to stay home for the next week or so until all that ice is fully melted off, and then she's going to come on the truck. I got those for Britt for our... Uh, three-year anniversary. Three-year. Well, it's not technically our three-year marriage anniversary. It's our three-year anniversary since we met, since I convinced her to... It's anniversary. Yeah, it's anniversary since... She she allowed me to come and visit her and meet her. Got me flowers, guys. That's twice mm -hmm. now. I know. I'm a lucky gal. I gotta wait a while. Otherwise, you expect it all the time. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want them all the time anyways. It makes them less special. I was just kidding. I'll get you flowers all the time. Nah. Hmm? They die anyway. But they look pretty while they do. While they die? Yeah. It's true. So we're gonna wait for our laundry to get finished and our vlog to upload and we'll head out. We've got to be in BC on Wednesday morning. I'm filming this Sunday afternoon right now. So we got Monday and Tuesday to get there and today to get a little bit of a head start just in case there's some weather in the mountains. It's actually a really warm day out here. Like look at this. You can see the, the water just streaming off of there, eh? Beautiful, beautiful, that's what I want to see. So that's the top of the roof there. You see all of that? That's all ice. And it's all melting, so that's good. This here is all the ice I broke off the roof. Like, look how thick some of these pieces are, eh? That's what's damming up the water on our roof and causing it to go up under the shingles. It's crazy. I pretty much got all of it off on this end of the house, but... Thanks, eh? That's what the aftermath of ice damming looks like. 
after you take the ice off. The true aftermath is inside the house and in the attic where all that moisture damage is going to be. We're going to be getting a quote, hopefully this next week, in the next week or two, how much it's going to be to get everything, everything redone. And we're back at it. Rolling down the road. It's that season again, all the water is melting, or all the snow is melting, pardon me, turning into water, getting into the cracks of the highway, and then freezing overnight, expanding, and creating a rough travel experience for the users of the highway. We'll just call it that. It's bright out here, yikes. So I have a pretty good feeling. And my good feelings are usually pretty good. I have a pretty good feeling that it's going to be a good trip. I think so. I am a little concerned about my engine though. Like I said, I'm nearing 1 million kilometers, which is uh, 600,000 miles in that ballpark. And uh, it's, it's going to be time very soon for an overhaul. Just the last time I had it in the shop, they're looking for where I was losing oil. The only place I'm losing oil is the blow-by, which means, I think I explained this to you already, right? Oil is getting past the piston rings, or there's a chance that it is. And that means the piston rings need to be replaced, and that means the engine needs to be overhauled, which is a big job. I'm gonna keep a very close eye on it. I'm gonna get my oil tested, see what everything looks like inside the engine. You can get the oil tested, and they can tell you uh, how bad the motor is inside, in some ways. But once I do overhaul this truck though, like I know it's gonna have to happen sooner or later, right? No, nothing lasts forever. I'm gonna have to rebuild this engine. At least then I know it's good for years to come, right? Life is very expensive, you know? We're replacing our roof this year, which is going to be I don't know, the only estimates I've gotten is like a ballpark of like $15,000. But we don't even know that yet, we gotta get a quote on that. And then this engine will be probably around twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000, depending on what all needs to be rebuilt and overhauled in there, but they'll probably do the whole thing right away. That is life, such is life. We're headed westbound right now on Trans Canada across the Canadian prairies. A little over two days drive. A little bit stressed out about it now, I'll, I'll admit to that. But you know, we just gotta have faith that everything's gonna work out. We gotta, what's the saying again? Put our nose to the grindstone, just work hard. And eventually, there will be a light at the end of the tunnel.
I was just talking to my dad on the phone. He's on his way down to Georgia. For those of you who are new to my channel, my my dad is the reason I became a truck driver. He's been a, a long distance truck driver as far back as I can remember my whole life. Uh, so in the summers, I would go along with him on the truck and that sort of gave me, gave me the itch to be a trucker myself, I guess. I loved it. One of, some of my best memories as a kid. But anyways, thank God for dad. And I hope I can be as helpful to my kids one day as my dad is to me and my sisters. He can fix anything. He is just the classic fix it man dad. If something broke, call dad, he'll fix it. He'll tell you what's wrong, <laughs> usually. Or at least he'll know what to do. So uh, I, I called my dad, told him what's going on with my engine right now and what I thought the problem was. And uh, turns out I think I may have been wrong. And he has probably about 30 years experience on me. So I, I trust that a lot more than my research. So I don't think the piston rings are the problem anymore on my engine because there's no blue smoke. All right, he, he told me that if there's oil getting past your piston rings and into your crankcase, there's gonna be blue smoke coming out your blow-by valve or coming out your blow-by tube and out your exhaust, especially when you start it cold. And that's not happening. So that's not the problem, I don't think. But there is still oil coming out the blow-by. So what he figures is, is it could be a sticky valve or the valves on top of the engine could be getting a little old, in which case I only need to do a top end rebuild, which is a lot cheaper than doing a full rebuild if it was the piston, piston rings, right? And the thing is, the last time I got this truck serviced, this whole the whole life of this truck, since it was brand new, it's been serviced with uh, semi-synthetic oil. And I got it serviced, they didn't have any semi-synthetic oil in stock and I needed a service really badly and I needed to get back on the road, so I told them just put regular oil in, right? Oil is oil, right? Wrong, wrong, nope. The problem could be that this engine is used to living on semi-synthetic oil and I put regular oil in it and it got angry at me. It's not liking it, it's trying to get rid of it. <laughs> Spitting it back out. That could be the problem. So what I'm gonna do now is, uh, I'm gonna take a gallon of Lucas oil treatment. Is that what it's called, oil treatment? Lucas, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? The white jug. And uh, if I need to add any oil, I'll add some Lucas in there as well with it. And what that does is it add, acts as sort of like an extra lubricant and sealant inside your engine. It, it just helps the oil do its job better because it's regular oil, that should help. And then the next time I get my truck serviced, I'll go back to semi-synthetic oil with Lucas in there as well. You truckers know what I'm talking about when I when I say Lucas, right? And then I'll do that for a couple of oil changes and see if that changes everything. And if that stops the leak on its own, well, there you go, that was the problem. My engine just, it likes the good stuff. It's it's spoiled. It likes having the good stuff. And I gave it like McDonald's for a meal and it it it, it got the squirts. <laughs> Sorry to use that analogy. Uh, but it, it, I'm hoping that's the only problem. If there is an actual legitimate problem with the valves and this problem doesn't let up, well, then I'm going to have to take it into the Volvo dealership, uh, the Volvo shop, and they're going to have to open up the engine and take a look. But from the symptoms that my engine is presenting, Dad says that it's most definitely probably not the piston rings themselves, and it's probably just the top end that needs to be looked at, worst case scenario. So, you know, thank God for Dad and all of the experience he has. He's a very handy guy. And he's been through all of this before. Like, he, like I said, he, he drove truck, what, almost 30 years before I even started driving truck? And I've been driving truck for 12 years already. I started in 2006, that's even more. So that's 13 years, oh, wow. In October this year, I'll have been driving truck for 13 years, wow. But I was local 
for the first while. I, I delivered locally within Manitoba and around Winnipeg. But I've been over the road since 2011, so eight years I've been doing this. Same thing as my dad. And he's in 30, so he's been doing it almost 40 years? Wow! So I think he knows what he's talking about. He's been through a few trucks, he's been through a few engines. I'm gonna take his advice and do what he says he would do. And let's hope and let's pray and let's cross our fingers, whatever you wanna do, that the problem is nothing serious. And it doesn't, I should say that it doesn't develop into something, it's not serious right now, that it doesn't develop into something serious. Let's say that. So I have a bit of an advantage, having someone I can ask for, uh, or ask advice from, and then he just happens to be my dad. Like, I hope I can do that for my kid one day. Like, I'd love it if I had a son who got into trucking. I mean, I'm gonna open up as many avenues as I can for them once we do have kids. They can do whatever they wanna do, whatever makes them happy. But uh, if they do decide that they wanna be a trucker just like their dad and just like their grandpa, I hope that I can be as helpful to them as my dad is to me. I hope that they can like feel confident asking me for advice like that. It's pretty cool. Speaking of kids, my buddy Moses and his wife Colleen are expecting their baby any day now. You guys remember Moses? He was a groomsman at my wedding. Uh, they're from uh, Southern Virginia. And he's a truck driver as well. Drives a beautiful Kenworth W900. I'm jealous of his truck. But he's at home right now for a few weeks. They're waiting for their baby to arrive. It should be any day now. By the time you watch this, Moses might be a dad already. I don't know how many of you know him, but he's one of my best friends. He's, he's a great guy. He's gonna make such a good dad and Colleen's gonna make such a good mom. Oh, I'm just so excited for them. I'm a little jealous, I'll admit it, a little jealous. I wish it was us as well, but super excited for them. I wish them all the best if you guys are watching this. If the baby is here already, I'm sure we've already all been in contact, but super exciting. I'm gonna end the vlog here now though. Thanks for watching everybody. I've gotta end this vlog because I've gotta to start tomorrow's. There, there, there has to be a vlog tomorrow too. And if I don't, and if I just keep talking today, I'll have nothing to talk about tomorrow. Right? So tomorrow we'll be starting here in Saskatchewan and we're probably gonna to get to around Calgary, Alberta, headed west. So hit the subscribe button if you like my videos, if you like my ramblings, if you like the scenery, for whatever reason. Love to have you a part of the crew here. We're trying to get the channel to 100,000 subscribers and we're almost there. As of recording this, we're less than 11,000 away. It's so exciting. I've been working towards it for so long and it's exciting to see us getting close. So if you like the videos, chances are your friends and family probably will too. Share it out on your social media and that's the best way you can help us get to 100,000. Thanks guys and I'll see you tomorrow.